Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto channel and a very special day today as I get to debut a very anticipated indicator. It's anticipated by myself because it's been very secretive before now, and that is the HPDR or the historical price delta range made by the caretaker himself. He hasn't released anything in a long time or at least not of this nature in a while. And so it is time for a caretaker to unveil his new, his new, his new little magical indicator of which I've created a couple strategies for. I'll show you one in this particular video, but first things first, what actually is the HPDR? Well, I'll let you. I'll let the man tell you <laughs> in his own words, of course, and that's over here. So the general idea of the syndicator is to give traders a clear graphical representation with numerical outputs of the range of historical returns. You, as a trader, can use this information to help calculate the probability in relation to historical returns that the price will make a particular percentage get price gain or loss and hit a particular price within their chosen sample length. All right. So that's a long way of saying that I have a nice little strategy for you, <laughs> which is over here. So this, this, the strategies that I'm going to unveil for this indicator, um, I want to say first and foremost, yes, you can scale them all the way up to, you know, a four hour, a six hour, 12 hour daily. I'm focused more on the short term timeframes here, but I do find that they generally work best on the lower time frames if you're more of a scalping type of person. Um, so if you want to get in and out relatively fast, then this is perhaps something worth considering. If that's not you, if you're looking to hold trades for days and trade the trend, um, this is not for you, uh, or at least in the way that I'm going to be using this, it is certainly not for you. All right, sweet. So um, first things first, before we actually get into it, I should let you know that because this is a low time frame, this is a five minute time frame. we're going to be getting iterations all the time. The numbers, however, will be on the smaller side naturally, because right now Bitcoin is in one of the lowest volatility periods that it's ever had. So one of the things that is a consideration is fees and fee structure. So it would be best to be used on exchanges with low fees like Bybit. Of course, I have a special link, in fact, in the description below where it does give you 0% on fees for maker orders. So that means if you're a limit order, not getting filled at market price, but on a limit order, then you don't pay any fees, which is actually a humongous gain, especially with a strategy like this. So you don't really have to worry about like, you know, covering your fees in this case. Anyways, let's get into it now. So we're going to be focusing on the five minute time frame. Uh, we're going to be using the HPDR, the BBWP moving average, and then the PMARP, which are all caretaker indicators. Uh, the only paid one, however, is the HPDR. Uh, you can find it on the app, of course, but uh, that is going to be the, the only paid one out of these. Everything else that caretaker has or the overall majority is, uh, is incredibly uh, is incredibly generously uh, free, actually, which is kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, but fair enough. Anyways, what defines a risk management parameter? So ideally, we want to see a closure below the prior range low. We can use the Lux algo for this. So I'll even put this in. Um, uh, so we can use that. Um, or if you know how to plot ranges yourself, you can do it that way as well. The, the key is that you are consistent with it. Emergency, um, a wick below the prior lower low in, on the actual trend. Didn't happen once in testing, but as always, need an emergency condition because black swans are a non-zero probability and not, not wise to mess around with. Um, so how will positions be entered? Well, what we need to see, and this is going to make a lot more sense once we actually get to some examples, is we need to see the price close below the blue range low or a price below blue range low and close, another way of saying that. Um, and then we cross check that with the BBWP moving average to see if it's trending down from the prior close to current close. So if the prior, if the prior close moving average is higher than the current one, where it is also closing below the bottom side of the blue range lows, that's an entry. And for the purposes of this testing, we'll do a full position, of course. Um, you know, there's ways to optimize this as always, but need to be consistent for pet testing purposes. How will positions be exited? So profit taking, we need to see PMARP above 75 percentile on closure. A few optimization considerations. You can use these if you like. You don't have to use them, of course, at all. I won't test them in this way because obviously that's, you know, that's going to make things a lot more convoluted and a lot more complicated. And I want to be as direct and, um, and consistent as possible with this, but you could size up if you're further away from the blue zone. So if you're in like the yellow, uh, orange, red zone, then perhaps consider putting, um, higher, you know, higher size on, you could use the time component of the quant stats to essentially say, Hey, if I'm looking for this trade to, you know, on average, if this trade is expected to take like 30 minutes to win, and now it's uh, closer to an hour, 
I'm probably most likely going to lose this trade. So I might as well just close it now instead of wait. Um, so that reduces your opportunity costs and potentially your your loss as well. Um, you can also obviously plot your your P and Ls, but you know your, your take profits and your loss areas um, using the quant data, just taking the averages. Um, you can also only take a signal if the BBWP moving average is a gr is uh, greater than 50 percentile, or you could also close intra candle when PMARP levels hit. This one I do uh, in my own practice. I won't test like this, however, because that's gonna it's well you can't do that with the data obviously. But anyways. Let's now go into, um, I'll just show you very briefly on the charts what it looks like. This is what it looks like really quickly. And then I wanna show you next the statistics for the 50 iterations that I've tested myself. Um, this was between the 12th of November to the, to, to the 22nd of November. So in a 10 day span, there were 50 trades on the five minute. Um, as you can see, I recorded them all right here. We'll do like nine or 10 together after this. Um, of the 50, 37 were wins, so that gives it a 74% win rate, which is pretty damn good, especially when you're getting trades this often. Um, on average, the, the, the winners took 45 minutes or a little over 45 minutes to return. On the losing side, 70 minutes. And of course, the next thing that I'm most interested in is the average PLs for the win percentage versus the average PLs for the loss percentage. I don't really care so much about the raw nominal numbers. I'd want the percentages because that's going to be cons more consistent over time. And found that on average, uh, the winners were returning 0.45% versus the losers at 0.63% uh, loss. Um, first standard deviation gives us a range right here for the wins versus the losses right here. And then I did a min max as well. So we'll go through and, and back test a few together or nine up to nine. Assuming that uh, the time on this is going to be, you know, <laughs> allowing for such things, and so let's uh, let's just get into it. So here's the here's a setup over here. Um, I'll briefly show you, you know, how to get the other indicators. They're all default, by the way. So BBWP, it's this one by the caretaker. There you go. Twenty one hundred likes, amazing. He deserves another billion <laughs> for that one. It's a lovely one. One of my favorite indicators. And PMARP is literally my favorite indicator. And again, you know, here are the. Uh, the, the settings for it, oh, I should actually show you where to get it. Just type in PMARP, boom, there you go. Um, by the caretaker again, PMAR, uh, well, first off, you need the indicator PMARP right here, 20, VWMA, 350 look back, that's all that matters for this. BBWP settings, 13, 252, those are the big ones, or, and also SMA right there as well is important. All right, sweet. So now that we have that, I am going to take a sip of this water, and then we're going to get into some examples. And then obviously the HPDR, you know, you'll have access to that if you're supposed to have access to it, but it'll just show up right here. Oops, <laughs> there we go. All right, lovely. Okay, so now that we're into it, and, and then I have the Lux algo for the support and resistance. Um, that one, just type in Lux algo, boom, there you go. Oops, or keep it all one word. There we go, it's this one right here. It'll plot the support and resistance for you. If you, you know, if you don't know how to do it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's good. Anyways, um, okay, so now we're looking for closures below the bottom side of the blue range lows um, alongside the BBWP moving average. So that's this white part right here of this indicator reducing from the prior closure to the current closure, the closure that actually has, you know, the closure below. So we can see that there's a couple closures below the blue zone right here. So let me actually first mark off what the blue zone is. Uh, it's this area on the current one. Okay, here it's here. So the most difficult thing about this indicator is literally like deciphering the blue versus the cyan. It's a little bit difficult there. Um, I'm gonna get rid of all of these. I'm also gonna put in a horizontal for the take profit level, which is 75, there we go. Um, so we'll zero in it over here. These ones are obviously closing below. So we have a closure below, a closure below. But here's the thing, once we get those, we need to go cross check the BBWP moving average to make sure that it's decreasing from the closure of a closure. And in this case, I'm gonna mark off where the actual closures are. It's right here and it's right here again. So we can go and reference this. And again, it's the white portion of this indicator. And you can see the prior closure, which is right here, is showing a number at the top left hand side in the white number that's the moving average uh number um is 921. so the first one that we have is 1317. that's obviously increasing that is not an entry then we go up again 263 so what's the next one well 3349 so neither of these satisfy those conditions so we move on uh, we have another one right here okay closes below 
I think quite obviously the moving average is, you know, turning up close over closure there. So no entry there as well. All right, let's move on. Okay, we have uh, definitely something over here. All right, uh, I can see that we have one visually right here. Boom, okay. We have a closure below. What's the prior moving average? Well, it's this one right here. Top left-hand side, white number, 6262. Current is 6087. Okay, we have an entry, lovely. Uh, uh, 17,115. All right, so now where's our range lows? Where are we taking, like in this case, not going to be going, not going to be waiting for that one. Wait, this is why it's important to actually know how to define range lows. Your real range lows are like right here. Um, anyways, we either wait for that to close below or for the PMARP level to get hit, which gets hit over here. So boom. So we have our entry 17,115. Okay. 17,115. We have our exit over here 17,149. One, boom. All right, lovely, lovely. Uh, that's a win, so I type on a one right there. I also like to record the actual time that it took. In this case, it took a little bit longer, so that's uh, 145 minutes, so I type that right there. Okay, boom, and boom. All right, so that's the first one. Nice, not bad. I'll take it. All right, let's move on. Um, let's find a new, more unique piece of price action. Okay, I'm, just, I'm first looking for closures below. So we see a closure below here, yes, just barely, but it is there. Moving average is obviously increasing from the prior to the current. Numbers 56, 43, current 60, even. No, that's no, no go, no go. All right, so we have a few over here. Um, this one, obviously, again, uptrending, uptrending, but then we get over here, might be. Okay, so the prior closure, and now I'm just reading the number from the pane, 86.98, current is 87.06, so still not there. We get another closure below right here. Okay, let me just remove the prior. So the prior number is 87.30 on the moving average, current is 87.14, that's an entry. Again, I'll just zero it in right here. 87.30, 87.14, boom, that's our entry. Okay, risk management is the closest range low, which is right here, so I'll just mark that off really quickly. All right, lovely. I'm going to write in my entry 16802, 16802, boom. All right, and then we move on to, well, where's our profit? Actually, this one happens very soon afterwards, 18, uh, sorry, six, 16824. We get that closure above the PMARP level here, 16824. Not much. Again, lowest one of the lowest volatile times in Bitcoin's history. But it's a win nonetheless, so we'll take it. Um, and again, obviously the numbers will be bigger if you go for higher time frames. I'll even show you some of them as well. In fact, I'll show you them right now. I'll show you some of them right now for the daily. <laughs> for the daily, we're talking like 12% on the wins versus 12% on the losses. For the four out, this four out right here, 376 versus 412. For the uh, hourly, 220 versus 242, so on and so forth. You get the idea. All right, let's go back here. Okay. So we got another couple wins, lovely. Let's continue on. All right, um, do we have one right here? We have a closure below, very obviously, but again, moving up from closer to closure on the moving average, so no entry. Do we have one right here? Uh, same issue, it closes below. Again, you can see it increasing from closer to closure. We have no entry. All right, we have one right here, however. Okay, boom, closes below. Moving average is very obviously downtrending here. I don't think we need to zero in on that. Where's our range lows? Again, I'd say that they were there, that they're over here. And we can see that profit taking happen soon after that. So uh, entry 16828. 16828, boom. Exit 16885. Alrighty, 57 bucks. How long did it take? It took, looks like about 35 minutes. So three, five, okay. Get all that other data in there, nice. Oh, whoops, I forgot to put it in for this one. There we go, make sure it's in there too. All right, okay, lovely. All right, let's on to the next one. Do we have one here? Yes, we do, yes, we do. Um, and this actually provides a bit of a nuanced example as well. So we do have an example right here, closes obviously below the blue zone. Um, we can see very obviously this is downtrending as well on the moving average. So in this case, 
um, we can't be in two trades at one time. Or, I, I, well, you actually could. To be fair, actually, you can. But I don't record it that way. I don't record it that way. So I look at it in the worst possible scenario. So in this case, I look at this as the entry, 16,875, and this as the exit, which is actually only a $10, $10 gainer. Um, so I will actually go with that. Now, in practice, what actually happens? And the time's obviously going to be different. But in practice, what actually happens? In practice, I would just average in. Um, but again, I want the results to be as bad as possible so I know what the worst case scenario is. So we'll do that. Um, so there we go. Again, doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to return wins. All right, um, we have an example here, obviously closing below the blue zone, but I do want to address this one as well. So you can see that the PMERP is above the take profit level, like the whole other prior ones. So that's why I'm not choosing these ones, even though they do probably fulfill the criteria. Um, but in this case, I just look at this one. It's just phone blowing up with notifications. Um, anyways, uh, so we're looking at this 16,815 prior uh, moving average is 98,81, current 98,10. Okay, so we have an entry 16,815. 16,815, boom. All right, literally the next closure after that is the, is the, is the exit 16,827. Again, a nuanced example, you could have very easily waited for, you know, one of these uh, one of these higher prices over here, realizing that this is an extreme read, so it's probably going to trade a little bit higher. But I'm going to go by the book, 18, uh, 16, 8, 27. 18, 8, 27, boom. Okay, L literally talking like 12, uh, yeah, 12 bucks there. It's like, it's nothing. Um, I, I don't need to measure that. It's five, five minutes, one bar. Okay, boom. And the idea is every once in a while you get a nice big winner um okay we need to find a loser though they certainly do happen uh i'm sure we'll find one before the end of this all right do we have an example here nope moving average is up okay zoom out a little bit more do we have one right here yes we do boom moving average is, ob is obviously turning down so let's record this one 16344 righty take pro or where's our risk management this low right here that blue line is the range lows where's our take profit here 73 no this one right here uh 16401 so there we go and again during periods of extreme low volatility we expect the returns to also be low as well this one comparatively to the last few a lot higher okay there we go. Let's do a few more, nice and fast here. Um, we got a closure below right here, but moving average is turning up, 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 up. So no, no entries there. What about here? We can see the moving average up, 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 and down. So we actually do have an example right here. This is, oh, <laughs> nice. Um, 16,378, 16,378. And what's another optimization? You could just enter back down around the lows, really. Um, but in this case, you know, we got an entry right there. Obviously, risk management is much further down, so it's not going to get hit. We hit our take profit right here a little bit after that, 16,432. 16,432. I thought this one was going to be a loss. It wasn't. So that is 54 bucks gainer. Let's see how much time transpired. 30 minutes. Nice and nice and sweet short and sweet exactly what we're looking for here okay certainly we are going to find a loss i can assure you of that they they do exist for this strategy um okay we have another example right here boom closes below obviously the moving average is decreasing what's our number 16464 16464 boom yep uh obviously Support is right here, so as long as it doesn't go below there, on a closing basis, we stay in, and our take profit is here. Lovely, 16500 So $36 gainer. We're rich now. <laughs> uh, let's see, 40 minutes. By the way, we've seen all these iterations, like literally just in the past. Let's see how far back we are now. This is literally like two, this is like literally three days ago. Um, okay, anymore. We need to find a loss though. We need to find a loss. All right. Um, no examples here. No example here. 
I'm just going through this a little bit faster now. I just want to, I just want to find a loss. Okay. This is another winner right here. Close below moving average is obviously trending down 16,130. Boom. Okay. Take profit is over here. 16,177. Not bad for that. Alrighty. Boom and boom, 125, so that's 85 minutes. All right, we need to, I'm just gonna find a loss for the last one just to like find one. Um, okay, that's gonna be another winner right there, damn it. <laughs> um, it's a good problem to have obviously, but I wanna show you like what it looks like when you, yeah, it should be something like this. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Well, okay, we don't have one. Yes, 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 okay, finally. Jesus, finally. All right, so this, these are what the losses usually look like is that it's an extreme move, in this case, to the downside. You can see BBWP moving averages moving up the whole way through. So all these closures are below. And once it takes down from 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 99, 84, boom, that's our entry right here. So it would have been 16, 435. 435, hey, stop that. There we go. Um, and then you can see that's our range lows right here. Closes below right here, 16,375, 16,375. So $40 loss right there. Is that okay to have when you just had a bunch of gainers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, or at least in my opinion, uh, so that's the whole idea here. So boom, boom, 125. So that's another 85 minutes and there's our loss. Hey, what? This should be a loss. Hold on, uh, this is not right. Um, wait, that there, no, I must have written some. Oh, 375, 375. Apologies, yeah, not 475, 375. There we go. All right, there we go, $60 loss. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I mean, it's not what I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, let's see, 48, okay, four. Let's include that. So 45. So 45 out of 59 were winners. What's the win rate based off of that? Uh, 45 um, divided by uh, 59. Okay, that's 76 and change. So something like that. Um, time win, time loss, basically the same as before. The only thing, the only other thing that won't update is the first standard deviation. So I'll just quickly put that through. 45 minus uh, 29 is what? It's 16. It's actually the same here, hasn't really changed. Um, and then 45 plus 29 is what, 74. So that actually did not change as well. So this data is literally very consistent with the prior data, um, which is what you should expect actually, <laughs> you know. Um, let's see, uh, 63 minus 51 is what? That would be, whoops, that'd be 12. So again, same thing over here. And then 63 plus uh, 51 is, oh, Actually, th that's why it hasn't changed because I need to update these numbers right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Yes, we need to include this and this. 488, boom, four. Yeah, that's what I thought that looked a little bit strange. Okay, and then same thing over here as well. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And here, four. Not that that one matters as much. Whoops. I'm very OCD about this. Um, okay, it's still not right, and that's why it's because it's being pulled from like way far be behind. Uh, 430. Okay, four. There we go. Okay, that's what it should be. All right, so did we get everything now? Okay, 88, 88. Okay, this one needs to be 88. And this one needs to be 430. Okay, 430, 88, yes, we got that. Just double checking, yep, all right, we're good. Okay, so these are the ones that I care most about. Um, so what's 41 minus 28? Of course, that's 13. So actually this one, it's more variance in the data from what we got. And 41 plus 28 is what, 69? Good number right there. Alrighty, and then for this one, we have uh, 11. Okay, and then for this, it's gonna be 111. Just, uh, six, one plus. yeah, alrighty, we're good there. 
Okay, sweet. So that's kind of the results for what we have on these 59 iterations. Um, gets trades very, very often. As you can see, the PNL is very small. Um, now they obviously in the past they have been bigger. You know we have seen certainly one hundred dollars or more in the past for the five minute. But realistically, until Bitcoin you know trades back above like thirty thousand to forty thousand, I would expect these to be in like you know around fifty basically on average. Um, until then, I think that is a good place to be leaving off on this particular video. I hope that this was insightful as to one, the way that I trade, two, the way that the quant program works, and then three, uh, Caretaker's new indicator, the HPDR. Other than that, I want to wish you well. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.